In this edition of the classic rivalry, it's been the Giants making all the plays. Glove flips. Crashing into walls. And delivering when it matters most. Now it's the final game of the series, and the Giants are going for the sweep. Giants Dodgers next. here at the corner of third and King as we wrap up this series and this homestand it's the Giants and the Dodgers. Hi again everybody I'm Dwayne Kuyper alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well I don't know if we had this well thought out enough to think that they would be going for a sweep today but they are and uh, and it's an interesting matchup Mike you got Bolsinger a kid that they saw last year in Arizona in Ryan Vogel's song is just trying to get on track. Well, Ryan Vogelson is going to be the key today. And uh, lifetime against these Dodgers, he's 4-4. Four and four, But this year, he's really gotten off to a slow start. Ten innings, he's given up 20 hits and 12 earned runs. They need him to do what he has done in the past, and that's keep them in a game, especially early on. You're on house money. You've won the first two games of a three-game set. But this isn't one where you'd be happy winning the series. This is the Dodgers series, and you need to meet it, make a statement if you're the Giants to get some confidence back. And this game will allow them to do that. After a long game behind the dish last night, Buster Posey's back there again this afternoon. Stay tuned. We will take you to our Comcast Sportsnet studios for an update, and we'll do that right after this.
is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Jack's hottest sandwich is back. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's Blazing Chicken Sandwich. By Toyota, number one in MPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. And by DraftKings.com. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com with the official daily fantasy partner of Major League Baseball. Enter promo code ORANGE for free entry. Your Giants have certainly turned things around on this homestand against the Dodgers. They've secured a series win in today. They go for the sweep. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez. And this series is always exciting. But add a walk-off win to the mix, and the adrenaline rush kind of goes off the charts. That's exactly what happened last night. It is our Togo's big play, the Togo's way. We're going to take you back. Last night, ninth inning, one out. Dodgers skipper Don Mattingly calls a meeting on the mound, decides to go with a five-man infield pulling in Puig from the outfield. Now Joe Panic at the plate. First pitch RBI sack fly. Game over Giants first walk off win this season. It was Panic's first career walk off RBI. Now about the clutch at back. Panic told me he knew his job was to get the ball in the air. He happened to get a pitch elevated in the zone and he put a good swing on it. All right. The final game of this three game series coming up. Lineups, first pitch, Kruk and Kuyp, it's all coming at you. Ryan Vogelfong taking on Mike Boltinger coming up after these messages. Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Jack's hottest sandwich is back. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's Blazing Chicken Sandwich. By Toyota, number one in MPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. And by DraftKings.com. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com with the official daily fantasy partner of Major League Baseball. Enter promo code ORANGE for free entry. Your Giants have certainly turned things around on this homestand against the Dodgers. They've secured a series win in today. They go for the sweep. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez. And this series is always exciting. But add a walk-off win to the mix. And the adrenaline rush kind of goes off the charts. That's exactly what happened last night. It is our Togo's big play. The Togo's way. We're going to take you back. Last night, ninth inning, one out. Dodgers skipper Don Mattingly calls a meeting on the mound. Decides to go with a five-man infield pulling in Puig from the outfield. Now Joe Panic at the plate. First pitch RBI sack fly. Game over Giants first walk off win this season. It was Panic's first career walk off RBI. Now about the clutch at back. Panic told me he knew his job was to get the ball in the air. He happened to get a pitch elevated in the zone and he put a good swing on it. All right. The final game of this three game series coming up. Lineups, first pitch, Kruk and Kuyp, it's all coming at you. Ryan Vogelkong taking on Mike Boltinger coming up after these messages.
presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission is free. Visit online for park hours at beachboardwalk.com. 60 degrees here at the yard. Winds at 8 miles per hour. Humidity is at 63%. And it is a little hazy, but still lots of sunshine. All right, let's take a look at the lineup that Vogelsong will be facing. It'll go like this. It'll be Turner Puig and then Adrian Gonzalez, who did not start last night. And you can see what's happened in his last 17 at bats against the Giants. Kendrick Grandall and then Crawford. Alex Guerrero, kid with the big home run last night, is in the lineup at seventh. Peterson eighth and Bolsinger will bat ninth. On the hill today for the Giants will be the veteran Ryan Vogelsong. This will be his second start, fourth appearance. And for Vogelsong, 6'4, 215 pounder, 37 years of age, in his ninth year at the big league level. When you take your advance against him, you're going to see a, a fastball that goes 88, 91, depending on the grip. He has to be on those corners. That is what has always been his strength, his ability to corner control all of his pitches. He'll cut the ball, he'll sink the ball, he'll give you a curveball, a slider, and a changeup. Lifetime against the Dodgers, four and four. Let's take a look at the defense the Giants will employ today behind Ryan Vogelsong. Starting in the outfield from left to right will be Aoki, Pagan, and Maxwell. Crawford and McGee on the left side of the infield. Panic and Bell on the right side. And Buster Posey, a day game after a night game, not a problem. He'll be in the squad putting down the signs. The series has gone to the Giants. They won 6 2 on Tuesday and 3 2 last night. Talk about the pitches that Vogelson throws. This is how he grips them. That's the four seam fastball. That'll give him the most velocity. That's a two seam fastball. That'll give him the most movement of the fastball. That's a sinker. And there's the curveball with the pressure on the middle finger. And then there's the cutter. Almost like a fastball, a little bulge on the uh, on the left side of, of the ball as you're holding it out in front of you. And there's the changeup, a circle grip on the side. And that is the weak part of your hand. The, the middle of the ring and the little finger and you throw it just like a fastball. So here's Turner. Turner in the leadoff spot. No Rollins today. No Juan Arebe today. And here's the first pitch of the ball game. And he hits Turner. Maybe something's going on here when you see that, but I'm sure that it's not the fact. Well, I, I, I doubt if there is something going on. A two seat fastball right in the hip of Justin Turner. So just like that, Vogelson puts himself in the stretch. Odd, isn't it? Well, it, it is a bit odd. I mean, he's a guy who usually has impeccable control, but uh, I don't know of any issue that there. That Vogelsong has with Turner, I and mean, Turner is just not the kind of guy that provokes a lot of controversy with the way he plays. Plus, it's not exactly how you want to start out the game, even if you have bad intentions. So here's Yasiel Puig. Puig has three hits in the series, and Vogelsong now right out of the stretch. And a fastball at 90 and a swing in the minute. That would be the pitch to swing at, though, because you know the pitcher's trying to get it into the strike zone. Yeah, once one guy hits, I think everybody feels like, come oh, well, on, I'm not going to get it today. Adrian Gonzalez is on deck. And the next pitch is wide. One ball and one strike. Dodgers are 9 and 5. They've lost two straight. They're 8 and 1 at home and 1 and 4 on the road. Giants are three and six at home and three and four on the road, six and ten overall. Turner with his lead being held on by Belt, and the pitch is low. Let's take a look at the umpires. Manny Gonzalez behind the plate today. Jim Reynolds, the crew chief, at first fielding Colbreth. Well, he's the crew, crew chief, actually. He's at second. Clint Fagan's at third. For Manny Gonzalez, a good zone with width on both sides of the plate. Good pitcher strike zone today, and that is something that will always benefit 
a corner pitcher like Vogelson. So it's two balls and a strike. And now it's three and one. One thing that Bogusan cannot do today, he cannot nibble. He has to be aggressive. Well, there's trouble on deck. So it's three and one, and Bogusan has to come in, and Puig knows it. And he hits it high and foul and out of play. So there's a three one challenge. Quig lifetime against Vogelsong is two for five. Not a lot of history. Gonzalez says Gonzalez and Crawford have the most at bats against Vogelsong. So it's three balls, two strikes. And it's likely Turner will be on the move. He goes. So going to foul out of play again. He seems to be looking into the dugout for some instruction, maybe from Mark McGuire. McGuire, the hitting instructor, elbows up on the banister. Mattingly. Skipper just to his right, our left. Three and two. And Turner goes. And this is driven to right, and there's something behind it. Maxwell is going to get there, however, and make the catch. And hustling back is Turner. And three can't believe it. Sweet never dropped the bat. Balls to right field, especially off the bats of right handers, have just been killed in this ballpark because of the way the winds have played in this three game series. He did that ball good. He did. Oh, that's a beautiful swing. A lot of power. And as it took off, we're thinking that's off the wall at the very least. Didn't get to it. To so me, like Justin Maxwell starting to feel a little more comfortable in right field, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Here's Gonzalez. Gonzalez tries to lay down a bunt and it's foul. Now the Giants put on a shift and they're basically giving Gonzalez the, the bunt single the way they played the defense. But for a guy who's got five home runs and 14 RBIs, if he's got a bunt, he's kind of doing you a favor. He really doesn't make an adjustment. He stays back. Foul back gets snubbing in two. That's that real easy swing you see out of Gonzalez, but so powerful when it goes through the through the zone. I, I think he has the most relaxed approach in the game. And the lighter the grip, the heavier the bat head. And his bat head is extremely strong. A lot of of strength up and. The barrel of that wood. Got him, and Gonzalez knew it. Well, the sun paints him, and that's what he can do. And he locks in to where he can corner paint on the knees. He can give you fits if you're in that batter's box. Two seam fastball, and just right between the knees. Posey frames it with a little shoulder lean. And you look at the compact, powerful stroke of Ryan Vogelsong. That's our Exmo brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Here's Kendrick. Kendrick breaking ball for a tall strike. Kendrick off to a great start. 340, two home runs, 10 driven in. One for three on Tuesday. And last night he went 0 for 4. Did hit the ball pretty well a couple of times last night. Beautiful lazy Thursday afternoon. Perfect for baseball. Just misses. Uh, 
on deck. Should Kendrick reach would be Yasmani Grandol. Turner does not go and that's out of play. By the way birthday wishes to Shirley remember Shirley used to work outside the the, uh, the door here Brandon, yeah. Brandon's mom. Yeah. And Shirley it's her birthday today and her son Brandon said would you please wish her a happy birthday. All right. Shirley birthday. Evans happy birthday. I think this was Brandon's cheap way of not having to send a card. <laughs> yeah. Come on. He figured out the system. Shirley, you need to get on your kid. Outside, two and two. Turner opened up the game hit on the hip. He's at first with two outs. And that'll end the inning for Vogelsong and it turns out to be a good inning. Giants are coming up. Aoki will lead it off. Mike Bolsinger will face this lineup. It'll be Aoki and then Joe Panic. And you can see Joe's heating it up over the last six games, including a game winning sacrifice fly last night. Pagan, Posey, and Belt. Maxwell gets the start against the right hander. McGee in the seventh slot. Then it's Crawford and Vogelson. On the hill today for the Dodgers will be the right hander, Mike Bolsinger. Bolsinger with 51 days of big league experience. He's 27 years old, 6'1, 215 pounder. And what you see about Bolsinger is a very high release, a high three quarter, almost an over the top release. Pretty straight fastball, low 90s, and a good curveball. It's a 12 6 curveball. He's also got a good changeup. He will sink and cut the fastball. He's got a slider. He has to move it around, but he's got a little deception in his delivery. Bolsinger out of McKinney, Texas. Boy, his numbers in the minor leagues this year. He. He threw 11 innings allowed three hits no runs three walks 17 strikeouts. That was in Oklahoma City. Oh, that's a pretty live yard. It's not a pitcher friendly ballpark. And a first pitch strike to Nori Aoki who's hitting. At a 338 clip with three runs batted in. And he hits this one on the ground to Kendrick. Aoki's retired. Let's take a look at the defense that the Dodgers will employ today behind Bolson. You're starting in the outfield from left to right. It'll be Crawford, Peterson, and Puig, the best arm in right field. Turner and Guerrero on the left side of the infield. Kendrick and Gonzalez will be on the right side. That's Monty Grandal. He'll be in the squad putting down the signs. Yasiel Puig, one of the best arms in baseball in right field. So here's Panic. 
Panic takes a strike. Passing it right around 87 with the fastball, so he's a little short than what we saw last year with the velocity, at least for now. And that pitch runs inside. Guys saw Bolsinger a couple times last year in June and then in July. And uh, Giants lit him up the second time, five runs and five innings. First time, though, he dazzled him, five hits allowed, just one run. You see a lot of hard throwers, then you face a guy who's got command and he's kind of under the hitting speed. And that can throw your timing off at least a time or two through the through the lineup. Pagan to follow. Breaking ball hit into right field and it'll fall in front of three. Looks like Panic saw that early enough to stay back. Yeah, he didn't get fooled on that at all. And there's the curveball. It drops right down and in. And he has great balance in that swing. That back leg not fooled at all. Drop the head and just say get down. After the play we saw Puig made last night on a similar line drive. You, know, you don't trust a lot going to right field. Here's Angel Pagan at 311. And he takes a pitch up and in. Pagan had a couple of hits on Tuesday and then went 0 for 4 last night. He hasn't had too many 0 for 4 games, but he did have one last night. Panic with his lead. And this is hit out to left. It's going to carry out to Crawford. And Crawford will make the catch. And here's Buster Posey. As I mentioned in the open, it was a long game last night. Three hours and 16 minutes, a lot going on. Day game after a night game, and here's Posey in the lineup. Well, you made a po point in our conversation before the game about how much Posey means to Vogelsong. The Giants are trying to get Vogelsong in the comfort zone. And if it means Posey catching a day game after a night game, Posey's all for it. Yeah, it may have been too that look, Buster may have gone to Bruce Bochy and said, I, I need to catch that guy. It is rare, especially early in the year, you see a catcher go a day game after a night game. And the Giants have more than one catcher. And they have three right now. Andrew Susak, Hector Sanchez. Posey center field, but Peterson's got a beat on this one, and that'll end the inning. No runs, a hit, one left after one. It is nothing, nothing.
in regards to the Giants fighting spirit we've gotten off to a rough start but I love the fight in these guys and uh, he's serious when he says that he means that here's Yasmani Grandal to lead things off and some manager sees every day he sees you're down to eight runs in a game. What type of intensity do you have in your at bats late in the ball game? Small things like that. Panic. The belt on one pitch, one out. New Giants mini packs have just been released. Visit sfgiants.com slash mini pack to check out the four game pack options. Each pack includes a Dodger game for as low as $79. sfgiants.com slash mini pack. Here's Crawford. Just missed a bit. But there's a lot of little indicators of the fight in the team in the eyes of a manager. I mean, just the attitude that they have, the way that they go about doing their business. Getting the ballpark before a game. How they prepare, how they handle a tough loss, how they handle a, a big win. I mean, there's just things you know about your team and for Bochi he likes this bunch three and oh to Crawford outfield straight away and Pagan is just about as straight away as you can be And Vogelson comes in for a strike. Yes. The man that hit the big home run last night for the Dodgers. Crawford goes the other way, and he's got a little something behind it. And out he's at the wall, and he makes the catch. Check in with Amy G. Amy. All right, fellas, good news for Hunter Pence making some improvements. He's actually swinging his own bat off a tee. He's graduated from swinging a wiffle bat. He's also playing catch. I spoke with him today, though, about his role right now on the team while he's unable to play. He said simply, it's his job right now to be a great teammate, whether that's being encouraging to a player, lending an ear. He told me, guys, that he wants to be a fountain. I said, I need clarification. What's a fountain? He said it's the opposite of a drain. He wants to fill people up with positive energy. Guys? A hunter coming up. <laughs> a babe. He's a fountain. Here's Alex Guerrero. And a call strike. Shouldn't be surprised that he would come up with something like that. Especially if he's got a lot of time on his hands. Well, he's had a lot of time. He's starting to get a little stir crazy. He wants to get in a ball game. He wants to compete. This kid's got some thunder in that bat it looks like now one thing they've learned about him is that he he's a middle end guy and he is killing balls middle end I mean last night they tried to go in his hands it got a little leaky out over the plate and boom that was it that's a two run shot that tied things up for the Dodgers that came in the seventh inning that was the last pitch that Bungard would throw in a night where he did not make well, many mistakes a little education maybe for Madison Bumgarner as far as how to pitch that guy. One and two. Two balls, two strikes. I mean, this guy's numbers are ridiculous. They are. He's got 11 RBIs and 16 at bats, three home runs. Couple of doubles. So you have to think that he's definitely hit the comfort zone mentally. Defensively, they just haven't found a place they really like him at. And that'll be the challenge. Getting him those at bats. Hit well into left center field. Pagan's gonna look up and it is gone. He's hit another one. His fourth of the year and the second in the series. And that came to a two strike count. Oh. 
Set up in the outside corner. It just sort of comes back in. They tried to put down the outside part of the plate, but it tailed right back in the strike zone. And in a two strike count, he goes deep to center, right off the top of the wall. So here's Peterson. See that, that fan do a little somersault out yeah. there? That was a bit unusual. Be careful. Peterson takes a low. All right, watch the the fan up here. Uh oh. Remember, it, it's an $18 ball. Don't get hurt. Two balls, no strikes. All right, one more time. See the dad Swings over, hanging on to Junior, and then uh oh. It's okay. It's good change up there. You saw the lower body of Peterson really looking for a fastball, and, it, and the lower body committed, and he was not in, in sync with the pitch. Up the middle, and a base hit. We always talk about if he's got his back leg in a pitch. You can watch the lower body. I mean, he's looking fastball, and it just the ball never got to to the speed that he was looking for. It was short because it was a changeup. It was about eight miles an hour slower than what he was expecting. And that's what you try to do as a pitcher: take his lower legs out of it. So here's Bolsinger. And a strike in its own one. Top of the order, Turner's on deck. One ball and one strike. The middle. Crawford with the flip and they got him. Close. Rockets on the board. Belt, Maxwell, and McGee coming up. is brought to you by Momo's, a San Francisco tradition. Well, looking for the best coverage of San Francisco Giants baseball, log on to CSNBayArea.com as insider Alex Pavlovich will provide wire-to-wire -wire reporting of the Giants 2015 season. 
You can get breaking news, video, special features, and much, much more only on CSNBayArea.com. Here's Belt standing in. He's hitting at 167. He had a big hit in the ninth inning last night. You see his numbers. He also is looking at the shift, too. Notice that Kendrick isn't playing as deep as a lot of second basemen do in the shift, and that's because Bell can run pretty good. That would not be the wishbone. Is Gonzalez to Bolsinger. And here's Maxwell. Really a, a little surprised at the velocity we're seeing from Bolsinger. It's a little bit short of what we saw last year. This is our first look at him this year. Last year we saw a lot of pitches around 90. And today it's been 86 87. Maxwell fouls it out of play. I just saw something go by in the uh, in one of the other games we're watching that Joe Nathan Joe Nathan's going to have season ending surgery. Yeah, he's 40 years old. He says he's not ready to retire. So it's going to take the year. Usually about 14 months to try and rehab a, a Tommy John. He wants to try and come back. Vogel song and Nathan were rookies together. On this Giants team was probably what 2000. Two, three, maybe. One, one to Maxwell. Breaking ball, hit on the ground and into the hole for a base hit. Who first saw Vogelsong in 2000? Yeah, so that's about right. Yeah. Vogelsong, 37 years old. He'll turn 38 in July. Here's McGee. McGee hitting at 171. And a breaking ball that uh, maybe high. One ball and no strikes. Gonzalez, you're not going to get a lot of high strikes, but you get wide strikes. I mean, he's got width on both sides of the plate, but he does look low. Great zone to throw to. And once you get in the first, you usually get all the way through the ninth. It's very consistent. Now Justin Maxwell is a guy, despite his six foot four inch height, you don't think you don't see that many base dealers that tall, but he can steal your base. And with Bolsinger, he's not that fast out of the stretch. That last unload time was 1.34 seconds, and that's that's slow. Brandon Crawford is on deck. One ball and one strike to Casey McGee. Double play ball. Six, four, three. And that'll end the inning. Top of the order, Justin Turner coming up.
McDonald's True Stories, April 23rd, 2012. Hector Sanchez hit his first major league home run in New York. Game two of a doubleheader, and he hit it off of Dylan G. No relation to Amy G. Here's Turner. Turner was hit by a pitch to open up the game. Her ball for a strike. That's pretty good. First pitch strike. I bet. I bet Turner's a good bruiser. Yeah, when he gets it. drilled, I bet yeah. that bruise hangs around for a couple weeks. Yeah. Redheaded guys, man, they're good bruisers. Pagan watching that wind carry it, and Pagan easily gets underneath it. And here's Pui. Yep, they got their good attitudes on. You know, for the Giants and the Warriors. We used to uh, have to call the grade school about our kids. You know, being sick. Yeah. You know what they called the teacher and said? What? Kids are sick. Baseball fever. That's true. Baseball fever. Won't be in, won't be in the classroom today. A little baseball fever. Strike to Puig, who didn't think so. Her ball, kind of a funny spin on that ball hit by Puig. Well, Warriors indeed tonight, game three. They're taking on the Pelicans. You can see it right here in Comcast Sports Net Bay Area. Free game live at 5.30, game time at 6.30. Fitz, JB, Roz, they'll all be there. So you can watch the game with a team that knows them best. So also available, you can stream live on CSNBarrier.com and NBC Live Extra. So go Dubs. He's feeling it. Might end up seeing that guy at the game tonight somehow. There's a pitch down low, one ball and no strikes. Well, if he's got his own jet, I think he could make it. Yeah. We're gonna miss a lot of it because we'll be on a plane. Maybe all of it. No, we'll see the last eight minutes. Low again, two and oh. Game will probably be over by then. No. Nah. It's going to be a barn burner tonight. Down to the last 30 seconds. Gonzalez, center field. Pagan back, starting to carry. Gone. And on a 2 0 pitch, Gonzalez makes it 2 0. Ball behind. A pitch to hit. Well, and that's number six on the year for Gonzalez. And he could just look one speed, one location. And that sinker had some height to it right up there just below the belt. And the big boys, I and mean, if they hit him hard, it doesn't matter where they hit him. He'll take on the deepest part of this ballpark and still clear a wall. Here's Kendrick, who struck out in the first inning. So two home runs in this game. For LA, Guerrero, and now Gonzalez. One ball and one strike. Timeout is called. I guess that ball came back, and Pagan's going to throw it in. Folks, just keep the ball, don't throw it back. Slows the game up. Just keep it. Play catch with it. Give it to a kid. Who cares who hit it? Two balls and one strike. Just outside, three and one. So now Vogelsong back in that. Get it in spot again. Well, this is where a guy can 
can be greedy with the way he thinks. He can think pitch and location. And if he guesses right, he can hurt you. And Kendrick has good power. And that's ball four. First walk issued by Vogelsong. Here's Grandall. Matt Kane, we hope he's getting closer to doing some activity. Hard watching that guy in that pitch. It really is. Just because he was Mr. Automatic as far as taking the mound. There's a strike to Grandall. Grandall grounded out to Joe Panic in the second. And another strike, and it's 0 2. There's definitely carrying this ballpark day. Not a lot of breeze. The flags in right center. Straight down. And this is a day where balls will carry, and we've seen it to all fields, especially the left and the center. Carl Crawford hit one right to the face of the wall. See two balls go out. Quig hit one to the face of the wall in right field. So this ballpark playing a lot different than did the very first two. Games of this three game set with the Dodgers. Hendrick goes swinging a pop up. Uh, it's going to be out of play. Everybody all right? We're good. No glove. O2 pitch. Foul back. Good O2 pitch. Start a fastball out on the corner, let your movement run off the plate away. Belt holding on Kendrick. And that pitch is high. It's one and two. And a quick toss, and Kendrick just gets back. Song now ready. Two and two. Two quick outs. Turner lined out. Puig bounced out, and then the home run by Gonzalez. Kendrick along at bat took the walk, and here it's two and two. Kendrick. Does not go, and this is bounced to Crawford, who is near the bag at second, and that'll end the inning. Gonzalez with his sixth, two nothing Dodgers.
and they lead two to nothing. Here in the Giants half of the third it'll be Crawford Vogelschlong and Noria Aoki. Sometimes I just want to be a fan. I just sit there and, and eat eat. <laughs> Here's Crawford who takes inside one ball and no strike especially in this part where. You can just stumble into a, a place that's got good food. Well, I, you know a lot of. Season ticket holders will tell me you know they wander around they'll always find a new place to eat they didn't know was there. Yeah. So April's always a good time for them because they. Find those new surprises. That's it. Now I'm hungry. Crawford tapper. To Turner. Turner's throw is wide. And Crawford's aboard, and that should be an error. Turner played first base last night. He's a jack of all trades. Coming across the infield off his right foot, just slings it up the line. There's not a whole lot that Gonzalez can do. And Crawford does something smart there. I mean, he runs straight up the line and doesn't lean at all in towards second base. If he has a little lean there and they tag him, then they rule him intent to go to second and he's taggable and he'd have been out. But he stayed straight on the line. Even with that ball getting past him, they did a D tag him, but he was safe. Bunt situation for Vogelsong. And he takes high, one ball and no strikes. Good job. You see Vogelson get himself in position to bunt. Slight bend in his leg. Her heart belongs to the Giants. If you set that bat at the top of the strike zone and the ball's above the strike zone, you take it like he did there. Hardest pitch to bunt's the high fastball. 2 0. So Bolsinger's put him in his spot. Now he has to throw a strike. Guerrero charging, Gonzalez charging. And the bunt, and it's foul. Bogosan turned around and asked Manny Gonzalez if that was a strike, and I think Gonzalez said it was not. Somewhere in that set of signs from Roberto Kelly was the bunt sign. See Guerrero, the third baseman, in the grass. Hit and run. Throw down to second. Got him. Uh, yes, Monty Grandal has got a cannon. Well, that's. It. I mean, that's more on Vogel song than it is on Crawford. Yeah, he, Got to make some contact there, and, and that's what you're betting on. Two balls, two strikes. Got him. Check out our AT&T U-verse rewind last night. Noria he almost got ticked off, but he didn't. Well, this is a magic move right there. Justin Turner kind of put the chase on and realized that Oki was not where he thought he was going to be. And Oki somehow eludes the tag to the chagrin of Justin Turner. That was that was entertaining. So here's Aoki, and he takes a strike, and it's 0 1. It's my dad. I have a 25 year old that still wants to jump up there and. So if you offered, she'd be right there. Oh, yeah, dad, can I? Jump on your shoulders? Sure, not a problem. Probably not. Well, it'd have to be at the deep end of the pool. That's exactly right. <laughs> Tap foul. It stays at 0 2.
I do miss those years where you could just flip them up there and they'd stay up there all day if you let them. Oh yeah. And another 0-2 pitch. And if my memory is correct. We took one of them up on our shoulders up the Camelback Mountain. Well, maybe you did, not me. Yeah. Weren't you there that day? Uh -uh. That was a great idea. And all of a sudden, about a tenth of the way up, I'm tired. <laughs> did not slow us down. I went up through years ago and I got I don't know about a third of the way up and I said that's it I'm done and we let them go until we couldn't see them anymore and then they came back down to two pitch that foul is that one of John's great stories where he was going down Camelback and he slipped and rolled down about 20 feet and landed at the feet of Four men. It was the umpiring crew. <laughs> Said Montague. <laughs> and they did indeed signal that he was safe. 2 2 pitch. Got him, and that'll end the inning. And that's the second strikeout for Aoki. Fourth inning coming up. Arias singles. Madison Bumgarner bunts. Dory Aoki hits a ground ball. And then Matt Duffy singles. And that's two runs, and that's your ground attack. And that's our T Mobile game changing ground attack. And that's Giants baseball. Panic goes out, Crawford. It's hard. After you see how they scored those runs, to stand up, stick your chest out, and say, "Take that!" <laughs> well, that's how they roll. It's the ground it's attack. Really, what they did in postseason. That's why they don't get a, a lot of applause in the scouting reports. The evaluators around the game watch the Giants, and uh, mm -hmm. the reports they write up are not that scary, but yet they win. This guy's scary right now. Well, Giants have not figured out Alex Guerrero. And that's an understatement. And they're having a hard time keeping him in the yard right now. And that's going to be out of play. And, you know, Guerrero has only got 17 at bats this year. So there's not a lot of history on him. So right now he is a big puzzle. They're trying to figure out what his weakness is. And he's got one. They just have to find it. 
One and two. This was the home run today. Get two strikes on him. Yeah, fastball just had a little leakage out over the plate, and he did this, took it over the center field wall. Two home runs hit today by the Dodgers have gone over the center field wall. There are days where that's the place you want to hit them. And that is the, the best carry to this field when the, the prevailing winds blow. You get carried to center and to left center. You don't get a whole lot of help to right field. Jam shot to belt. Belt to Vogel song. Let's check in with Amy G. All right, guys. Well, Ben Scully is in his 66th season calling Dodgers games. Hall of Famer said this year he's not going to travel the NL West anymore, except coming right here to San Francisco. I asked him why. He said several reasons. First and foremost, they are the world champ. Secondly, I grew up a Giants fan. He grew up in New York, of course. And he said he loves the rivalry and he loves this park. He told me, guys, though, if they were still playing at Candlestick, he might have to rethink it. Well. I think a lot of people felt that way, and he's getting his wish right now. Yeah, they're taking large chunks of it down every day now. Candlestick. I drove down 101 today, and you could just see a parsh, partial upper deck left. There are the seats. Got a few of those in my house. Yeah, two outside and two inside. I think Amy G's got a crush on Vince Scully. I do. Yeah. She's in his booth every day. Did you catch her checking Vince out the other day? Oh yeah. Oh. A lot of admiration. Two and one to Peterson, who single up the middle in the second. Six point two miles away. And there are a few pieces of her that the Giants brought over here to AT&T, the Foghorn. And you saw the seats out in right center. And a whole lot of memories. A lot of memories. That's the fastest way to get from the East Bay to, to the ballpark. It is. Ooh. That is not an adjusted two strike swing. Peterson last year in Triple A, 33 home runs. So he's got some pop in that barrel head. Two balls, two strikes. Skied out to right. This is Joe Panic. No problem. Well in the inning. Panic Pagan Cozy coming up at 2 nothing Dodgers.
Go Giants. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. Well, you can win a 2014 World Series champion's ring, and it's created by Tiffany and Company. It's identical to the rings given to the players and coaches, and the ring will be personalized with the winner's last name. You got to buy a raffle ticket, and you do that by going to sfgiants.com slash ring raffle and it benefits the community fund. Here's panic who takes a strike. Panic singled in the first inning Giants would take that right here to get something going. And a quick 0 2. He's throwing darts right now. Well, he's got a nice feel with that uh, curveball, and you can see that really is what makes him unusual because of the uh, the high release that he has. It's a it's a high three quarter release, almost over the top, and that's a, a 12 six break on that curveball. Just has not really impressed us at all with the velocity. No, but to his credit, he has not made many location mistakes with that fastball. It's been consistent at 86 87. And he gets panic swinging. Three strikeouts in a row after not having any in the first two innings. So here's Pagan who hit a fly ball to left field and is only at bat. And the first pitch is high for a ball 1 and 0. Giants have had three base runners panic a single Maxwell a single and Crawford reached on an air. Friends for life just rivals today 1 0 pitch. Breaking ball one ball and one strike. Pagan has had a nice homestand 12 for 38. Up on the fastball, it's one and two. It's a good look at this sellout crowd today. Day baseball in the city, always very popular. Two and two. Try to wrap around the outside corner. Some creativity with the curveball. Just need to get Olsen here in that stretch. So it's three and two. Colorado in San Diego playing this afternoon in Denver. That game is in the sixth inning, and the Rockies are leading two to one. Yeah, Corey Dickerson, another home run today. Giants to see him and his Rocky teammates tomorrow for three games in Denver. Are you ready for Colorado? I am. I brought eight coats. Slowly hit. It'll be Gonzalez. Two down. And here's Buster Posey. Buster flied out to center field in the first inning. Saw some of the New York Detroit game where the Yankees beat Detroit, but it looked cold back east. Did. Saw some of the Pittsburgh game today. It looked cold in Pittsburgh. There's that breaking ball for a strike. That time of year, I mean, springtime, you can get a 75 degree day, and the next day you can get a 38 degree yeah. day back east and in the Midwest. Mets won again today. 11 in a row for the New York Mets. I tell you what, in that town, 
they will start printing playoff tickets right now. <laughs> oh, yes, they, they will. will. Well, they were hoping they could get off to a good start, and they have surpassed that. 13 and 3 on the year. And Posey with a base hit to right field. So here's Belt. Yeah, the Mets are off to the start that everybody thought the Nationals would get off to. And the Nationals coming into the day are seven and eight, but the Mets are now 13 and three. Well, so far they're getting along. Give it another couple of innings. Here's Belt who bounced out in the second. Inside to Brandon Belt. Overshift design. Outfield deep. You can see Peterson's very deep. I mean that, that is as deep as you see a center fielder play and he's got great range. It's not like he has a problem going back on a ball, which is why he plays deep. Now, I really haven't noticed if he plays everybody deep. I will start to check now, though. That's almost prevent defense right there, doubles defense. Where you just don't want a ball to get by in the gap and you play way deep at the outfield. Well, what does he go to? 2-0? Oh? Goes to that curveball, and nobody has even pulled a swing on that curveball in a 1-0 oh or a 3-1 or a 2-0 oh count or a first pitch. Hey, the gamer babes are here. This boat she's going what? That was a pretty good pitch. I mean, it always looks better when the catcher catches the ball. But I thought it was there. Two balls, two strikes. Breaking ball hit the other way. Crawford back. And that'll end the inning. No runs to hit one left. Three four to nothing Dodgers. The packs included tickets to the Metallica Day, and that game will be on Saturday, May 2nd, and two of the Orange Friday Happy Hour games featuring live musical performances pregame in Seals Plaza. For more info on the Music Series 3-pack offer, go to sfgiants.com slash minipack. 2-0 Dodgers were in the top of the fifth inning. And for Ryan Vogelsong, he'll face Mike Bolsinger, the Dodgers pitcher. 
and a quick 0-1. Well, the song today has done a pretty good job of getting strike one. And a pretty good job of getting the first out of the inning. And a breaking ball to Bolsinger, and it's nothing in two. A couple of Cub fans, Bear fans, White Sox fan. They got it all covered. Bolsinger on three pitches. Here's top of the order in Justin Turner. Two home runs in this game. Alex Guerrero hit his fourth in the second inning. Adrian Gonzalez hit his sixth in the third. And that's where we stand to nothing. Odd start to this game is Vogelsong through the first pitch and it hit Turner right in the hip. And it had nothing to do with the rivalry. We don't think. We don't think. Week to follow. And a half swing, and it's nothing in two. Seventy pitches now for Vogelsong. He should be seventy five at the end of the fifth. That's the goal. So he's not that far off. Got him. See you. Turner didn't think so. A little fastball. Absolutely a pitcher strike. Thank you very much. But well, it's not anything we haven't seen today. Absolutely a strike or absolutely a pitcher strike? Absolutely a pitcher strike. If you were in the batter's box, you would not be happy. Let's put it that way. Right. Here's Puig. And Justin Turner not happy. Understandable. Puig is 0 for 2. Maxwell a long run. Maxwell can't get there. It's into the seat. I'll never doubt any ball hit over there with Maxwell Maxwell in right field after the catch he made the other night. Oh, indeed. I mean, he's not afraid of the wall. That's for sure. And uh, let's take a look at that catch. And with Puig who hit it. I mean, it was so good. Slides into the wall, really hits his left knee in the cement below the padding of the wall. It was so good the Puig had to applaud it. You do that. I don't know. I'm not thinking that Puig meant that. <laughs> it didn't look like his heart was into those fellow fellow right fielder. I don't know. I don't think so. There's Hunter Pence watching. Puig taking his time, getting in the box, both song waiting patiently. Oh and two. He's throwing darts now. Well, Vogelsong could do that. For a guy his size, I mean, he's 6'4, 220. He's got a very compact, very repeatable motion. Breaks his bat. And Crawford will throw him out. Two pitches away and then hard in. And it's a one, two, three inning. Maxwell's going to leave things off.
is brought to you by The Solar Company. Not just any solar company. The Solar Company. Switch to solar and save. 2 nothing Dodgers is Justin Maxwell stands in facing Mike Bolsinger. And there's a rare curveball that Bolsinger misses. It's one ball and no strikes. Maxwell's got a good idea with that bat in his hand right now. He's feeling very confident. He singled past Guerrero at third in the second inning. Here it's two balls and no strikes. He hit one of the loudest home runs the other night. Loudest and longest. Off the plate, three and oh. Yeah, he turned 97 mile an hour fastball around and sent it out of here going a whole lot faster than it came in. There's a strike. McGee to follow. And then Crawford. This is the sixth, seventh, and eighth place hitters in this Giants lineup. Breaking ball, three and two. Another breaking ball and a fastball count. And that one, Bruce Bochy thought was a little high. Generous call. Pitcher strike. We've seen a lot of them today. Some zones are that way. Last night was a zone that favored the hitter. Tonight, it's a zone that favors a pitcher. Breaking ball, and that's lifted into shallow left field. This could be an adventure. Nope. Turner, not a problem. So a nice comeback for Bolsinger. And here's McGee. Yasmero Petit headed down. That would be just in case the pitcher spot comes up here in the fifth. McGee takes a call strike. He's not happy. Talking back to McGee is Manny Gonzalez. Well, well, if you're Case McGee, what you deduct after the first two strikes are called is you better expand your zone. This when you go down the dirt if you're bolsing or up above the strike zone. Like that. You just don't want to go in the strike zone. When the guy's in the expand mode, don't do him a favor by throwing him a strike. Got him. And then we got him to chase down below. Fifth strikeout. For Bolsinger, four of the five are swing and miss strike threes. And just about all of them have been on that curveball. Crawford reached on a Turner throwing error in the third inning. Ball and no strikes. I mean, pitch count wise, Bolsinger is in pretty good shape. There's a strike to even the count. Another curveball in a, in a fastball count. 1 0. It's almost predictable. 1 0, 2 0, 3 1. And guys aren't even getting swings off at it. That's really not an easy pitch to look for either. So Bolsinger, who came out of the minor leagues, the Oklahoma City team, which is the AAA affiliate for the Dodgers, he'd been dealing down there, and he's brought a good rhythm into this game and a lot of confidence. Didn't allow a run in 11 innings, and he hasn't allowed a run here through four. High to Crawford three and one. It, it, 
Bolsinger getting three balls on any Giants hitter that hasn't even been an issue. Whether it's three and zero, oh, three and one. Here's where he throws that curveball. Broadcasters jinx. Oh, that was a curveball. It has one of the few times he's missed. Should broke that jinx out a while back. Yeah, my bad. Here's Vogel's song who struck out looking in the third. When they brought Bolsinger up, they had to make room for him. They sent Chris Heisey out. Heisey, who was just here in the big leagues for two days. One and oh to Vogel's song. On the ground to second. Kendrick will take his time and that'll end the inning. No runs a walk, one left through five. It is still two nothing Dodgers. League play for the Giants as they are in San Francisco to start the second homestand. The weekend of May 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. The Saturday game, May 2nd, the first 20,000 fans are going to receive a World Champions t shirt courtesy of StubHub. Visit sfgiants.com slash tickets. Thanks, Gregor, for being a good model. Here's Gonzalez. It's 2 0 Giants or uh, Dodgers. Let me ask you something, Mike. Letting Vogelsong hit. In the fifth inning. Reward for pitching well one two the next series you have is Colorado and you don't want to ding up the bullpen. Too much. Here's Gonzalez as he swings and misses. Well yes on both accounts. I mean both songs pitch well today. I mean, Dodgers only got three hits off him. Both the song has four strikeouts. So he's earned the right to be out there I and mean, it's a two nothing ball game. Here's a bouncing ball foul. And the only reason I I asked is because Petit was up in the bullpen. Well, one of the few mistakes that he made, a, a 2 0 fastball that was up a little bit. And uh, Adrian Gonzalez takes it out to the wall, over the wall in center field, his sixth of the year. And the other one was a two strike home run to uh, Alex Guerrero, the third baseman. So I mean, he really has pitched well today. And the point you make about the bullpen getting another getting a little rest before they go into Colorado, that's absolutely the truth. You never want to have an extended bullpen going into Coors Field. Because that is not a good formula for success.
I mean the most valuable guy in the bullpen going into Coors Field is the guy that was just up in the bullpen throwing. And that's Petit. You're right. I mean Petit can do everything for you out of that pen. I mean he can spot start you, he can long relief, he can situational pitch to a right hander, he can close. McGee shading his eyes with his glove and he makes the catch. One out. And here's Kendrick. The Giants not facing Zach Greinke today. He'll pitch tomorrow. And there've been people thought that was a break. But Bolsinger has pitched fantastic. On the ground, McGee's got it on one hop. The belt, two out. Nice play. So here's Grandal, who's bounced out twice. Off the line at third is McGee. First pitch swinging and it's out of play. There's a curveball for a strike. Good breaking ball. Mentioned the uh, Granky pitching tomorrow. A pretty good matchup at Dodger Stadium between the Padres and Dodgers. It'll be Andrew Kashner against Granky. 0 oh 2. Here it is to Randall. And it's fouled out of play. Very high on the 0-2 pitch. Tried to elevate him there with a fastball. It's really not that easy of a pitch to throw. And you have to say to yourself, if I'm going to miss with this pitch, I'm going to miss high. It's like saying if I'm going to throw a breaking ball in a two-strike count, I'm going to miss low. Oh, I do that. The pitch. Strikeout number five. Top of the order for the Giants. They need to get something going. It's two nothing. Dodgers. is brought to you by Heffernan Insurance Brokers, insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit hefins.com and by Xfinity, home of the most live sports.
Here at the ballpark today is Brian Stowe, right in the middle of your screen, here with his family. <laughs> He's got the attitude back, doesn't he? Oh, he never lost it. That's yes. one of the really more remarkable stories we've ever witnessed. It's great to see him. Just a great story about the strength of a family. Okay, chops this one to Turner. And Turner's going to throw out Oki on the first pitch. Yeah, every time we went to visit Ryan, whether it be in the hospital or here at the ballpark, 99% of the time his mom and dad were there. And all the other times, at least one parent was there or and other family members. And, and a lot of friends. I mean, just amazing support. And just you know, a, a very difficult situ situation that has turned out to be a testimony of a, one of the most beautiful things we've ever seen. One and oh to Joe Panic. Panic is one for two. Two balls and no strikes. Just checking on Twitter, it looks like the folks at Finities are getting a little impatient with the offense here. Guess what? We are too. Well, and so is everybody in that Giants dugout. And 41,000 of their closest family members here at the ballpark today. And the walk to panic, you see? That's all you got to do. Here's Pagan. Pagan today has flied out and bounced out. See Hatcher headed down to the bullpen. And the strike to Angel Pagan. Buster Posey's on deck. So here's Bolsinger throwing his 76 pitch, and it's sliced into center field, a base hit. Panic wasn't quite sure if Kendrick was going to get to it or not. Consequently, he could not get a good jump to go to third. Got a freeze on the line drive, and man, that's basic running skills. The only exception would be if there were two outs. And you watch the path of Joe Panic doing what you're supposed to do. Freeze and then go. But it prevents you from going third, especially when you have an arm in right field like Yasiel Puig. Boy, that is a deep set defensively in the outfield for Buster Posey. Well, Buster singled in the fourth. He's one for two. And he takes high. Bolsinger thought he might have had a strike. It's one and zero. Oh. That's a pitch, Mike. That Buster, we'll see, we've seen him swing at it at times. I, I, he might have been looking for a breaking ball. One ball and no strikes. He may be looking for one here. And he got it, and he taps it foul. It really has been one of the. Stories of success today for Bolsinger, what he's been able to do with that curveball in fastball counts, like we just saw in the 1 0 count to Posey. But now it's almost getting predictable. One ball and one strike. Another one, and he rolls it foul, so it's one and two.
So Posey now behind in the count after seeing a couple of breaking balls. Panic at second. Pagan at first. Got him. How about that setup? Fastball on the inside corner, and Grandal really exaggerated his target. Set way up inside and didn't move the glove one inch. And uh, Manny Gonzalez said, Yeah, but it's going to strike to me. And that is strikeout number five. So here's Belt. Belt can save the day. He's 0 for 2. Uh, he needs a hit like this. Just two RBI so far this year for Belt. Jeremy Athel heading down the Giants bullpen. And he's got a base hit, and here comes Panic. Panic's going to score. Giants are on the board. It's a 2 to 1 ball game. He needed it. Well, we're going to make it our fourth right choice. And I think Brandon Bell is just getting hot. And these are the type of hits you have to have to start believing you are hot. They went to the inside corner with a little cut fastball, and he goes right back up the middle. And a nice two out RBI, and the Giants have something on the board. And that is our Ford right choice. And it's likely that's it for Bolsinger. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and brake experts. We'll be back. Five thirty, and you can see it right here on Comcast Sportsnet, Bay Area, the home of your World Champion Giants. New pitcher now for the Dodgers will be Chris Hatcher. Hatcher pitched an inning of third in last night's ball game. Take a look at his numbers: eight strikeouts in five innings, seven hits allowed, the ERA a little bloated, but he throws hard. You'll see mid nineties fastball. With Run and sink. Slider. Split. And this one gets away. And Belt has got to get back. And he does. Ooh. Belt was sure that Pagan had gone. And he got too far between first and second. Plus remember he's not being held on. So he's going to be way off the bag anyway. He identifies it as I'm gone halfway. And Grandal looks at him, who has a great arm. And Gonzalez just can't keep a handle on it. Did that hit belt? They have. So it's 1 0 to Maxwell. Tyne run at second base. That's Angel Pagan. One 
ball and one strike. Quick fastball there. Take a look at the throw to first base from Grindal. He sees a little bit of an opening there. That may have got off the knee, the right knee, a belt. So it's one and one to Maxwell. There's that play that Mike's going to eliminate in the offseason. Well, I'm going to say it every time this year. Well, I think it's got to be modified. I mean, if you're not supposed to, to deceive the runner, I think that's what you're doing there. One ball and one strike. Swing and a miss. One and two. How so, about if you do it, you have to throw the ball? That's what they do at third now, right? No. It would end it. So two good splits and right very quickly. Hatcher has gone on top of Maxwell on a one-two count. One and two. Blocked by Grandall. Two and two. Andrew wants to talk to Grandall. Well, Maxwell trying to tie this game up. And after trying to get the Dodgers off the field, two balls, two strikes. He got him, and that'll end the inning. So the Giants are on the board. A couple of singles and a walk. Belts RBI single makes it a two to one ball game. By your local Toyota dealer. Good ball game. Couple of home runs for the Dodgers. Gonzalez and Guerrero. Bolsinger threw the ball well. Vogelsong did too. He only allowed three hits. And the last sweep by the Giants, May 3, 4, 5 of 2013. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service, your oil change tune up and break experts. Jeremy Affelt, the new pitcher now for the Giants. Off and a good start. Strike to call Crawford. Who will lead things off? Crawford, Guerrero, and Peterson. 
six base runners in five innings for FL. The ERA of 180, just tearing right handers apart. 1 1 1. That's the batting average they have in this. And you say, well, how is that possible? Well, the fastball movement that FL has is sink, and it will move into a lefty away from a righty. And because of that, lefties have a little higher average than the righties. On the ground, they have kicked off the mound, but Crawford's got it. Check in with Amy G. All right, guys. Well, our Giants magazine show, G Mag, is back for its season premiere April 26th at noon right here on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. We hope you tune in. One of our stories, it's about Bruce Bochy. Hey, the Bay Area knows how amazing he is. Three championships in five years. Find out what other managers around baseball have to say about Bochy. G Mag, 12 o'clock, April 26th. Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Dwayne? All right, we're in. Here's Guerrero. Guerrero home run and a ground out and a line drive to right and a base hit. He can hit. So here's Peterson. He can hit and he doesn't seem to waste any time doing so. Take a look at the balance in his swing. Just a slight little tuck with his knee and look at that upright position that his body is between his feet. I mean, that's balance. And we've seen him use the whole field now. Mark McGuire, the hitting instructor for the Dodgers, will applaud that effort. It's all about balance and timing, being able to use your lower body in your swing. Here's Jock Peterson, who singled in the second, then popped out. Scott Van Slyke is on deck. On the ground foul. And Andre Ethier once again the odd man out in the outfield and it's because of this guy Peterson. When Kemp was traded everybody kind of thought well all right, that solves the problem with Ethier not so. Well this guy has to play. I mean, he's an exceptional defensive player. He's got pop in his bat. I'm sure he doesn't like the eighth spot in the lineup. But Don Mattingly, I think, put him down there to kind of take a little pressure off of him. He really has responded quite well. I mean, Peterson hitting 302 coming into this at bat. But I think eventually you'll see him go up the ladder of the lineup. Power, pretty good speed, and terrific defense. <laughs> Pretty good combination. And the strike call one and two. Perfect pitcher's pitch. Not much you can do with that one. Good lead by Guerrero. Now it's two and two. Well, he caught that in the web. FL gets the sign. Got him. Oh, that's a good hook right there. And immediately Peterson turned around to Manny Gonzalez, the plate umpire, and asked if that was a strike. And as big as this thing is, it starts off right about the letters on the chest of Peterson and then just crashes completely across the strike zone where Posey catches it knee high off the plate away. That's <laughs> a big, big breaking ball. And he lost that for a little while. Well, it's back. It you is can't back. feel better more than that. I'm not talking about this year, but there were times last year. He did seem to get everything back once the postseason started. Because nobody is more lights out in postseason than Jeremy Affel. So how good is he? Well, one of the best ever. Ever. 
That's how good he is. By the way, this is not Vince like this is Jimmy Rollins. How good is Jeremy F. Out? Well, 22 consecutive appearances without giving up a run in postseason. No one guy who has one better, and that's Mariano Rivera, who's at he's at 23. Wow. And that's just remarkable consistency when the bright lights are on. You know, a lot of times you hear those numbers, and it, it it's impressive, but it's not quite as impressive until you put a name. With it that somebody else has done it, and when you start mentioning that guy, Marion Rivera, line to left, out he's there, and that'll end the inning. <laughs> Bottom three in the lineup coming up. New pitcher for the Dodgers, two-one Giants. In New Orleans, game three tonight at 6:30. Pre-game live will start at 5:30. You can watch it right here in Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. You can also check it out. It's available to stream live on CSNBayArea.com and NBC Live Extra. So good luck to the Warriors tonight. Keep it going. Yeah, we're going to shock the world. They're playing great. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and brake experts. The pitcher now for the Dodgers will be the right hander, Yimi Garcia. Garcia will give you a load of mid 90s with the fastball and a hard slider. They also throw a change up at you. Good stuff. 12 strikeouts and seven and two thirds. Just six base runners allowed, which explains the 2 and 0. Oh. And the 1.17 ERA has gotten off to a great start. And here he's facing Casey McGee. Turner's at third, Rollins at short. And McGee fouls it back. It's no balls in one strike. Andy Garcia, 24 years old. He's a rookie, 6'1, 210 pounder. Now the Dominican Republic. He came up through the Dodger system. Throws hard. McGee is 0 for 2. Get into a double play and then struck out. Well, I don't know about that one. It's 0 and 2, and McGee's just asking if can you maybe just check. Uh, he asked immediately, was it on the call or was it on the swing? And I think Manny Gonzalez told him it was on the swing, and I, I agree with you. If that is indeed what he said. If I'm McGee, I have a problem with it. Because I don't think he's swung. Let's take a look. 0 1 count, high fastball. Did he go? Yeah. I love this side shot. 
very revealing. I don't like it when it proves us wrong. <laughs> we just have to eat our words. That's all, partner. Two balls, two strikes. It's fine, just so you don't have to do it like four or five times a game. And I've done that. It happens. It's like making four errors in a game. Mostly on a day game after a night game. Yeah. Got him. There's Bochi giving Manny Gonzalez an earful, and that does feel a bit better after you strike out looking when you're walking back to the dugout, and the manager is arguing in your favor. But still a disappointing at bat. Here's Crawford. Crawford reached on an air and walked. And he swings and, and misses. No balls in one strike. Look at that man. Got a piece of Manny Gonzalez and played up there. He did. So it's all in one with Gregor Blanco on deck. Just a pretty straightaway defense from the outfield. Peterson, the center fielder, is playing a few steps over towards the left center field gap. The only guy who really is exaggerated in his defense of Crawford is Justin Turner, the third baseman. And he's well off the bag in the infield at third base. Can't really exaggerate a whole lot of Crawford. He'll use the whole field. Three and one. Hey, Will Clark's here, or is that Jack Clark? No, 89. That's Will Clark. Or at least that's his unit. Battle of the Bay. Wouldn't turn out great. 3 1 pitch. Here it is. Crawford on the ground, and that's a fair ball to Gonzalez. Blanco being called back. It's going to be Hector Sanchez. All this is is send up somebody that's got a chance to run into one with two outs. Well, and you look for matchups, and this is one of those things that Bruce Porchy will do. He knows that Hector Sanchez, especially from the left side, is a good low ball hitter. And Amy Garcia, you're going to see. You're going to see low pitches. I mean, everything he has is designed to be effective down around the knees. He's sinking fastball, the split, the slider. And that may be the message that Rick Honeycutt is going to give him. You know, Puts this guy up. Remember earlier we mentioned that on this date three years ago, Sanchez hit a home run. This is what it looked like in New York. Doubleheader day. He does this. And the folks, Finities, are going crazy. Yeah. Well, here you'd have to hit it a little higher. And a lot harder. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Right field has gotten. A little more difficult to hit the ball out of since the game started. Wind is picked up. So here's Sanchez. I mean, he was going for it. He was swinging for McCovey Cove. You're absolutely right. A man making a play. He needs a date to give that ball to. 
or just give it to the kid behind him. There you go. See? The power of suggestion. Nice going, pal. In tight, one ball and one strike. Did not miss by much. Garcia thought he had it. There you go. The guy in the blue shirt. Way to go. Don't wing it. Yeah. I think Grandpa sensed that he might have a little wing yeah. involved yeah. there. Grandpa's got his seatbelt on that baseball. There's a strike call, one and two. I don't know who's more excited, Grandpa, Mom, or Junior. I may have to go with Mom. Game a bit. One and two. Got him, and that'll end the inning. Through seven. Here on a beautiful afternoon in San Francisco, it's 2 1. Dodgers. With MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. The at bat is up to the moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and much, much more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or your tablet. It's a two to one lead for the Dodgers. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up and break experts. The pitcher now for the Giants is George Cantos, who's really been fantastic last night. Do a clean outing. Here he's coming into his ninth appearance of the year. Eight base runners, 11 and a third, with eight strikeouts against a walk. Throwing the ball great. Low 90s with sink and cut. Change up. Hard slider. Here's Turner who hits a high fly ball into right field and the wind is messing with Maxwell and he ends up making a nice catch. Nothing easy about a fly ball or a pop up right now as the wind has picked up and it started around two o'clock. He's camped under and then all of a sudden accelerate and wrestle her down and I believe that would have been a fair ball. Sun wind. Everything the Bay Area can throw at you, and you have to fight through it. Nice play. So here's Puig. Puig lines way over the the leaping panic, and Puig is aboard with a one-out single. One for four this afternoon. I mean, normally this would be a steal situation for Puig, but he has a tender hamstring and he hasn't done a lot of running on the base pass. So Bruce Bochy is going to get 
George Contos with Gonzalez coming up. Also Gene Machi heads down to the bullpen. Lopez coming in 2 1 Dodgers will be back. Javier Lopez coming into his eighth game this year, 3.38 ERA. You know, seven games, two and two thirds ERA, which is, tells you he has been used situationally a lot. Lefty's hitting 167, righties haven't done anything with him. But he hasn't faced a lot of them. But he's facing the premier lefty right now in the National League, the red hot Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez hit a home run on the third, and that's the difference in this game. And here he drives him down the left field line. It is slicing foul, and it needed to slice in a hurry. Well, if, if you've watched this guy when he was a Padre playing at Petco Park, he had a lot of home runs to left field hitting left handed. So anytime he hits a long fly ball that way, you kind of hold your breath because he has the power to hit it over the wall at any part of this ballpark. So it's 0 and 1. On the ground to panic. Panic to Crawford. Crawford to Bell. Double play. Just like that. The Giants are out of the inning. Top of the order coming up.
Sports Game Live. You get highlights, you get reactions, and you get analysis. It's all coming up right after the game. Two to one, Dodgers. And the Dodgers have brought in a lefty. JP Howell, the veteran left hander. Eighth game that he has come in. 0 1 of the year with a 2.08, though. He's off to a good start. Just eight base runners and four in the third. Well, actually, that's quite a bit. It's almost two runners per inning. That's not that great. Five strikeouts, though, in four and a third. He's got good stuff. Doesn't really impress you a whole lot with his velocity, but he's got good movement, good off speed stuff. Here's Nori Aoki. And a first pitch strike. Aoki has not been on base in this game, and that's unusual. Look out. Little cutter that just goes right over the right shoulder of Aoki. Closer than you think. That's head high right there. And that looks like a two seam fastball. That's not a cutter. I love the Expo. It doesn't. It doesn't lie. Tapped to Rollins. And Rollins will throw him out. So here's Panic. Panic drew a walk in the sixth, and he eventually scored on the belt single. Machi headed down to the bullpen. Let's see who joins him. And a base hit for Panic. He can hit. He can hit. It's a two hit day for Panic. Two hits and a walk. Every time he's been on base, but boy, you know, he doesn't try to do too much. Going the opposite way, and they played off the line, and he just simply beats the defense. Look at where they had positioned Turner. And he still finds a way to punch it through the hole between third and short. Pagan followed Panic's walk in the sixth with a base hit. Here he's batting right handed against the lefty Howell. And it's outside, one ball and no strikes. Not by much. Looks like Manny Gonzalez flinched, played up bar. Simple in the Giants bullpen. It'll be Machi if the game stays 2 1. If the Giants get a lead, it'll be Casilla. So offensively, Giants trying to get Casilla in the game. Oh. 2 0. Trying to turn that ball over, trying to get that ball on the ground. And those are nice takes. Two balls, no strikes. And a strike right at the knees. Two and one. Like he was taken all the way. Panic being held on by Adrian Gonzalez.
how making everybody wait. Yeah, a guy will do that. He'll slow things down, then he'll throw a ball down low out of the strike zone. Hope you chase. Yeah, just because you're anxious. I count on your aggressiveness to work against you. On the ground. Cut off by Turner. That's one. Not in time. So Pagan reaches on the fielder's choice. And now Don Mattingly's got to make a choice. Turner just a little flip right to Kendrick and despite a nice exchange there's too much speed from Pagan. And that's going to be it for how they're going to go in the pulpit to get their closer Peralta. So Buster's going to go back and talk to the hitting coach. Look at the book. What does it say? It's a two to one lead for the Dodgers. We'll be back. Pitcher now for the Dodgers will be their closer, Joel Peralta. He is three for three in save ops. And he's going to attempt to have a four out save here. One and oh, with no ERA, just three base runners of five and a third. And with Peralta, you're going to see three pitches, fastball, good curveball, and a great split. On a comes to the game now, he's at third base. On the double switch. Buster tonight or today is one for three. Pagan with good speed at first. We'll see if he tries to steal a bag. And Peralta maybe thinking the same thing. Now, I mean, if you steal Pagan, though, I mean, the Dodgers would probably walk Posey. And you would, if he was successful, have your runner in scoring position for Belt, who's been productive today. But I think po Bochi wants to see Buster Posey hit here. One ball and no strikes. So right at the get go, he throws the split, and Buster Posey somehow. Checks a swing. Yeah, you got a pretty good breeze blowing out the left. Which usually means that the carry is to center field. Ball, no strikes. That was a big curveball high, two and zero. Oh. There's the breaking ball. 
And he, <laughs> that came out of his hand. It looked like it was thrown by somebody 6'10. Peralta, I mean, he's got a quick arm action. He doesn't have long arms. It's, they're short. And because of that, it, it is a bit deceiving. Fastballs look a little faster than what you, they actually are. And he's pitching to Posey like he, like he wants no part of it. Dodgers got him in a four player trade with the Tampa Bay Rays last November. Posey will have the green light. Oh, that wasn't close. Not close. Peralta's no baby. He's 39 years old. Been in the big leagues nine years. Well, Rendall going to come out and talk to him. Felt had an RBI single in the sixth inning. RBA, RBI came in a two-out situation. He can swing the bat well. Fans would love to get him red hot. He has been cold for most of the month. And here's Belt. Breaking ball, pulled foul. That's the first breaking ball that Peralta's gotten close. One ball and no strikes. You have a great arm in right field, pretty good arm in center, no arm in left. And you know you're going to get a good jump of two outs, anything hit. Good speed at second with Pagan, average speed at first with Posey. There's the split. It's a lot of arm action, isn't it? Yeah, and it's quick arm action. I think that's the part of his deception. Not a big guy. He's only 5'10, 215 pounder. He's built more like a catcher than a pitcher. But he's been doing it for a long time. Got into professional baseball in 1999. Came up with the Angels. That was a great pitch and a good take. So it's two and one to belt. Good speed at second. Foul. Two and two. Trying to go in with that fastball and ran a belt set. Uh uh uh. Belt with the count of two and two. Now waiting on Peralta. Great pitch and another great take. That is not easy to lay off that thing. And that is exactly where Peralta wants to throw it. It's just dying up there. And Bell is spitting on it. Forty-one thousand two hundred and forty. Runners will be on the move. And they're standing. And the payoff. He walked him. Wow. I do not know how he let off. I really don't. 
Peralta had an open base with two outs, and he just used it. Well, now you got the potential winning run in scoring position. Maxwell is one for three. Hatcher struck him out in the sixth inning. And he struck him out on split finger fastball yep. below the strike zone. Yep. And that's what he's going to get here for Peralta. And he likes to hit with the bases loaded. It's Pagan, Cozy, and Bell. Big curveball is high, 1 and 0. That almost looked like a slow pitch it did. softball curveball. Yeah, it did. It appears that Peralta doesn't want to throw a strike. He wants you to swing at stuff out of the strike. That's zone. exactly right. He's not going to get in there until he absolutely has to. And I think his bread and butter is the split. You're going to see something down below the strike zone now, just like you saw with Belt. And that was a nice take. Now it's up to Maxwell to decide if this 2 0 pitch is one he wants to swing at or if it's one he needs to take. And that'll end the inning. Wow, what a play. Howie Kendrick just came up with the play of the day. And a great at bat from Justin Maxwell with the bases loaded and a high backhanded spear. That is a brilliant defensive play. And the Giants are denied. Two to one, Dodgers. It's tonight game three. You can see it right here at Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Free game live at 5.30, tip off at 6.30. Fitz, JB, Roz, they'll all be there so you can watch the game with a team that knows the Warriors the best. Also available on, you can stream live on CSNBayArea.com and PBC Live Extra. So here's Kendrick to lead things off facing Gene Machi. And this is hit out to Maxwell, and this one is going to drift into the seat. Gene Machi, take a look at what he has done in eight games this year. 3.38 ERA, no record yet. 
Five strikeouts against four walks at eight innings. We'll see low to mid 90s with the fastball, a little slider, and a forkball. Kendrick is 0 for 2 with a walk. Taps this one foul. It's nothing and two. See old saying in baseball, make a great play, lead off the next inning. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great play. It really was. And they preserved the one run lead that the Dodgers have. In the dirt. This is the play we're talking about. 2-0 count, and Justin Maxwell just puts a blister on it. The Dodgers had moved Kendrick over about a few steps towards second base, and boy, he needed every bit of it as he laid out parallel to the ground on a high backhander. That is just an exceptional play. Two and two, not a Kendrick. For the Giants in the bottom of the city, they'll have the bottom three in the lineup. McGee, Crawford, and then a pinch hitter. And uh, warming up is Pedro Baez. Machi's got it. One of the best fielding pitchers the Giants have makes a nice play on the comebacker. So here's Grandal. Grandall is 0 for 3. He's now hitting at a 171 clip. This is going to be Panic. He moves to his right after playing very deep. Two out. And here's Crawford. Crawford is 0 for 3. And he takes wide 1 and 0. Same spot. Two balls and no strikes. And the 2-0 to Crawford. You know. Juan Oribe is on deck. At the knees. Take it all the way. He'll take no more. Crawford moves this one out to Aoki near the line, battling the wind, and that'll end the inning. Giants need one to tie and two to go home.
some of the sights and sounds of this two to one ball game here on a Thursday afternoon. Now the Dodgers changing it up a little bit. They're going to try and save this game with Pedro Baez. Seventh game that he's come in. He's been good. Nine strikeouts in six innings. He throws hard, mid to high 90s with a slider and a changeup. Peralta had three saves with this Dodger team. That led the staff. Baez does not have a save. But he'll get that opportunity here. Here's Casey McGee, who's 0 for 3. Crawford. And then a pinch hitter. We're trying to get Carl Crawford's attention and move him a bit more towards the gap in right center field. He has had a tough day. A couple strikes out, strikeouts. He's hit into a double play, and he's looking for a big moment. Win some crowd over. And he has to feel like he's been put in a hole all day long with the strikes of Manny Gonzalez. Trying to get something started here in the ninth, trailing by a run. Pitch a bit wide, one ball and one strike. In the dirt, two balls and one strike. That's the hard slaughter. I mean, one thing about hitting off a, a, a reliever who has great stuff like Baez, I mean, you have to assume that he can throw everything over. It's not like you're taking a bat against a starter. It's the third time you've seen him. You know what he can and can't get over. Nope. Three and one. Woodland staying away. Dodgers. Really are in a pitch him away, play him away defense with Peterson in center and Puig in right. And a base hit. So McGee indeed does go to right, sitting in a good count. Duffy's going to run for McGee. Set up on the outside corner and just stays right through it. Nice top hand at bat. Watch the top hand throw here. And just shoots it right through the right side hole. So here's Crawford. Duffy now the runner. Crawford is 0 for 2. is going to fall and this game is tied Crawford headed for three he's going to make it and the Giants have the winning run at third base with nobody out unbelievable Two seed fastball out of the plate away, and Crawford just barrels it and splits the gap in right field. They had shaded Peterson towards left center, completely hits it away from the defense. And once he sees numbers on the outfielder's back, it's an open invitation to go for three. If that Duffy, an easy score. If that hits the dirt, the warning track, that's Double. bad news. So now the infield in. With Blanco at the plate. <laughs> and 
Inside, one ball and no strikes. Uh, he's going with the strikeout stuff early in the count. That's his split. That's his best weapon against a left-handed hitter. It's a 100% pure strikeout scenario for Pedro Baez, the pitcher. Great block by Grandall. Two balls and no strikes. Oh, he he got some dirt and kicked up and got him in the eye. Fastballs and splits, they're the most difficult pitches to block because they're unpredictable. And this one, he blocks with his right wrist. Wow. That's a great shot. So Rollins now having a word with Baez. Great arm and right with Puig. Good arm in center with Peterson. Not a good arm in left with Crawford. And all very shallow. They're really trying to take away the line drive to the outfield. Two and zero to Blanco. Swing. Two balls and one strike. And he just humps it up and throws 97 right through him, and that may have been the message from Grandall when he went out to talk. Quit nibbling. You got 97. Let's see him hit that. And round one of 97 goes to Baez. Out of play, two and two. And again, the fastball. And immediately he evens the count. If you're Blanco. You got to speed it up a little bit. And you don't want to leave it up to the next guy. Two balls, two strikes. Got him. And 97 right through him for strike three. So when he got his back right to the wall in a 2 0 count with two off speed pitches, his catcher came out and told him, Throw what you got, what got you here. And indeed, that's what he did. Three pass balls, and he gets the strikeout he was looking for. Well, it's likely, I hope he's going to see the same thing. And the infield has to stay in. And the outfield still very shallow. And they're really cheating in, in left field with Crawford. They know he doesn't have a great arm. Aoki is 0 for 4. Three ground balls and a strikeout. All standing. And this is not going to do it. It's going to be Rollins who makes the catch. Two outs. Again, the fastball. And another bullet dodged by the Dodgers. And that'll relax the defense, both in the infield and in the outfield. Well, it was panic. Who won the game last night with a sacrifice fly? And the Giants will see if he can do it in back to back games. And he almost hits him with 98. And that's how this at bat started. Well, that will definitely accelerate your bat speed if you're in the batter's box. And the guy blows 98 right by your kneecap. Yeah, if you're Crawford, you have to be heads up. You never know. And that ball might go to the backstop. It's one ball and no strike to panic. Hit out into left center field. 
And that'll end it. The Giants a chance to win it, but they do tie it on the triple by Crawford. We will head to the 10th. And the new pitcher is Santiago Casilla. Casilla pitched the last night's ball game. Just about everybody who's come out of the bullpen for both teams did. 1 0 with a 2.57 ERA. He's 5 5 in save ops. This, of course, not a save. Six strikeouts against three walks. You're going to see low to mid 90s with the fastball. He'll cut it, he'll sink it. Curveball, slider, changeup. Duffy now at third. Here's Oribe batting for the first time. And a breaking ball for a strike in its own one. Can't hang any of those to this guy. That's what he likes. Yeah, he's unforgiving with mistakes up with breaking stuff, especially sliders. And that fastball is down low. These guys have known each other since they were kids. Grew up in the same neighborhood. Picasso is in the bullpen. Uribe and Casilla. Two balls and one strike. Dodgers have three different players to play third base this afternoon. Guerrero, Turner, and now Uribe. On the ground foul past Davy Lopes. It's two and two. Hey boy, Dick. Dr. Dick Cohen. Good man right there. Been a ball due for us for a long time. Kyle Andrews over there on the third base side. Got his Barry Zito socks on. Just a wee bit low. You say to yourself, no free passes here. But really, with a guy with power, you've got to make a quality pitch. Posey wanted a fastball in. Casilla shook it off, and three times Posey put the fastball away sign on. Casilla wanted to throw a breakup ball. Posey saying, "Throw that fastball." Oh 
And he flips it to the right for a base hit. Nice hit right there. That was no hanger. So here's Peterson. Peterson is one for three. Jimmy Rollins on deck. Peterson shows bunt and it's low one and oh. And a breaking ball for a strike. He tried something different. Sometimes that's all you have to do is throw another pitch just to get another feel of something coming off your hand to get you back in the strike zone, back in control. And he bunts it. And Belt thought about it. And they'll get Peterson at first. Three four on the bunt. I am a little surprised that they bunted Peterson, to be honest with you. Simply because he's got power. And he's the kind of guy that can hit the ball deep enough the outfield. Even if he gets caught, you can advance a runner from first. And he just might knock one out of here. As it was, he bunted a pretty nasty pitch. So here's Rollins. Rollins in his only at bat. He pinch hit in the seventh. Hit a ball out to Nori Aoki. And he breaks down on that swing. No balls in one strike. All right. Absolutely broken down. This movement that he was not expecting. I think if he was thinking fastball, he was looking for something that two seam movement running away from him. That thing cut into him and just broke him down. Belt has this one. He'll take it himself. Rollins is gone. On the player rebate the third. And Andre Ethier is going to hit. So here's Ethier. Always a good hitter, hitting at 276. Always been a good hitter against the Giants. And he hits Ethier. And you know what? If he didn't hit him, it goes to the backstop. That's just a flat out overthrow right there. Dave Rigetti's going to go out. Nice two seam movement. It catches him just to the right of the right kneecap. And two things happened immediately. Rigetti hopped up on the first step, started heading out the mound, and they sent Ismero Petit to start getting loose in the Giants' bullpen. And the trainer for the Dodgers hopped up and. Yosuke, Yosuke Nakajima, the assistant trainer for Los Angeles.
And Nakajima really is a massage therapist. I mean, he's just out there just filling in for Stan Conti, who's in the clubhouse for the Dodgers. So the hitter will be Creed. Allen almost went to the backstop. You're right. I mean, that's a break. If it doesn't hit him, I mean, they're going to score that run. And now they've got their hands full of Puig. Giants have no more left handers in their bullpen. They've got Petit and they've got Romo, both righties. So here's Queen. He's singled in the eighth. And it's inside. One ball and no strikes. Gonzalez is on deck. A long look into Buster Posey, and now he's ready. Oh, looks like Buster called time. A rebound third. And that's easier at first. Two and all. To stay inside. Now they do have a base, but you have to ask yourself would you rather face the right handed hitting Puig or would you rather hit, face the left handed hitting Gonzalez? And you have to be careful and you have the ability to do that with an open base. But I don't believe that he wants to load the bases to face Gonzalez. Puig. Just laid the bat on his shoulder, took it. I don't understand him at all. Puig and Gonzalez have had about the same lifetime success against Casilla, and not, not a whole lot of it. Gonzalez one for six, Puig one for seven. Yeah, trying to get in on his hands at the belt. Three and one to Yasiel Puig. And a full count. That's a three one paint right there. Perfect pitch. It's been that way all day. I see a lot of pitcher strikes out there in the outside corner. And that is a perfect pitch. Ethier will be on the move. Three and two to Puig. See if they come back inside. I suppose he will let you know. And he walked him. So tried to go with a 3 2 breaking ball. And left it in. And that is not where you want to throw this thing. Let's take a look at the sequence. Opened him up. Fastball off the plate in. Tried to crowd him again. Fell behind 2 0. And he gets the slider, a little cutter rather away. That goes 2 1 now again on the hands. Puig lays off. Here's a 3 2 paint. A pitcher strike and then a, a breaking ball. A pretty easy take for Puig. So here's Gonzalez. He's one for four. And a strike and it's all in one. Wraps around a little curveball and takes strike one. That's a nice pitch. Feels a whole lot better having an 0-1 count with the hitter up there with the bases loaded than it does with a 1-0 count. No overshift, but panic playing in shallow right field. 
Outfield pretty much straight away. We saw Gonzalez try to bunt with the switch earlier in the game. He at least looks at it. Way outside, one ball and one strike. That's a pitch that really doesn't set up a whole lot. Man. It really doesn't. Just kind of a wasted pitch. One and one with the bases loaded. Petit continuing to throw in the Giants bullpen. Giants trying to get it to the bottom of the tenth. Tied. Two balls and one strike, and now the next pitch is pretty important. Well, you're right. I mean, he had the 0-1 advantage, so he tried to go off the plate twice, and pretty easy takes for a guy with a good eye like Gonzalez. But now in a 2-1 count, he's got to get in that strike zone again. Well, he does he not want to get to a 3-1. Open it up with a breaking ball. Let's we'll see if he throws that here. Out of play. It was a fastball, two and two. And that is the challenge, and he had to do it. So now he can think extra fine when he's thinking about where he wants to put this pitch. He's got that one shot at it to try and make Gonzalez hit his pitch in a two-two count. And the 2 2. And he pulls it foul. And it was a breaking ball, and that almost got Jimmy Rollins, but it did get somebody. Well, they've got Scott Van Slyke or Jimmy Rollins. So he goes to the 2 2 breaking ball down and in. And Gonzalez now in a two strike count. He's got to expand a little bit. He fights it off. Two balls, two strikes. And this has been the waiting game in this inning. Two and two. Out of play. 94 with two seam movement running away. And again, Gonzalez expands his own and fights off a good pitch. I don't think that that is going to get called a strike if it's taken, but if you're Gonzalez, you can't take that chance. The zone has been a big strike zone today. It's been a pitcher strike zone. You see the defense set up, pull on the infield, straight away in the outfield. And another 2 2 pitch coming up to Adrian Gonzalez. Got him. Santiago Casilla Houdini. Here it is. Giants are coming up.
cover for our player of the game brought to you by Honda. One on, down by a run. Brandon Crawford steps up and hits a gap split triple. It tied the score. It made it a 2-2 ball game, and that makes him our player of the game brought to you by Honda. And that's where we are right now, 2-2. Dodgers bringing in a new pitcher. It's going to be Juan Nicasio. Take a look at the numbers for Nicasio. Ten strikeouts in seven innings. He's off to a good start. You're going to see fastballs that are pretty healthy. Mid, mid to high 90s with the fastball. No two and four seam. It. Got a hard slider and a, and a change up. Well, basically fastball slider. Go get him. So here's Pagan. And Pagan looks at a strike. Nicasio pitched an inning and a third on Tuesday through 24 pitches. And the 0 1 to Pagan. And Pagan takes another strike. Two seamer, perfect location outside corner at 94. Coming into this series, Pagan, three for nine lifetime against Nicasio. You see Buster Posey, who's got only John Nicasio, he's on deck. Way outside, one ball and two strikes. Easy take. Wasted pitch. The movement on the fastball that Nicasio is throwing right now is movement that runs away from a, a lefty into a right hander. He's working that outside corner. So the one two to Pagan. Two and two. So two really good pitches and then two not so good. Hey, you like to make it a little more inviting if you're ahead to count 0 2 or 1 2 than those last two fastballs. For Pagan, no brainer takes to get to the 2 2 count. Two balls, two strikes. And a full count. Pagan. Took every ounce of strength not to swing at that. Oh, you're right, and that was not that easy. Five pitches, five fastballs, all the same speed, movement. This little guy's ready. It's, it's rally rag time. Here's the payoff to Pagan. And Pagan flips it in the left field, a base hit. They might have bat. Pagan's second hit, and here's Buster Posey. Well, I mean, he saw six pitches of the same movement, and with Pagan, with that ball running away from him, and he's just going to flip it to left field. But that is a disciplined approach. Two seam up around the belt, easy to defend, just throws it right over the head of Jimmy Rollins. And the Giants have a leadoff hitter on. Here's Posey, one for three with a walk. Five for nine against Nicasio coming into this series. And he wraps this one foul off his foot. Belt on deck. And then Maxwell. Here's the 0 1 to Buster Posey. Up high, one ball and one strike. Really haven't seen anything but fastballs. 
Adam Nicasio. We talked about the movement that ran away from the left handed hitting Pagan. It's moving into Posey. And with his inside out swing, you can see why he is five for nine lifetime against him. It feeds his swing, his natural swing. The movement on his fastball does. Popped him up. So Posey retired. And here's Belt. Belt has. Has had little success against Nicasio. One for 12 coming into the series. He had one of the big swing of the bats today. This is a two out RBI in the sixth. Remember, that was a two nothing ball game at the time, and the Giants finally got on the board. Good at bat. He's been really starting to put together a good swing and a good eye. And with Belt, like a lot of hitters, when he gets good pitches to, to hit, that's when he starts taking off. And staying in the strike zone is key. Jack Peterson, the Dodger center fielder, really plays a deep set. It is doubles defense time. Puig very deep, guarding the gap in right center. They give the line in right field. You have good speed with Pagan at first. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. Maxwell on deck. It's one and one to Belt. Belt fouls it out of play. You get another fastball in. It's one and two. That's right where Picasso wanted to put that thing. In. That's right at the Belt inside corner. Pagan with his lead, Gonzalez holding him close. And a pitch out. So the Dodgers thought that Pagan was going, and it's two and two. I mean, maybe be the first pitch out we've seen this year. Yeah. It's kind of gone the way of the dinosaur. Not a whole lot of pitch outs these days. Not a whole lot of teams that are running anymore. Two and two. And he goes. And it's high. And the throw down is not in time. Well, that changes everything. Yeah, we go. I say, when's the best time to go and try and steal? Well, right after a pitch out. And I think they're going to walk. Now they're going to check this and see if his feet stayed in contact with the bag. Now I think he had one on at all times there. Right? So you can see what the Dodgers are at least looking at. Yeah, he definitely was in contact with the bag. This replay review is presented by Xfinity. I think from the seven thirty nine, right? It's it's up to the umpires if you ask. Right. No, but, no, in a game like this, they're always going to look. Right. But if you're wrong, I think you should be punished. It's been a night in the box. <laughs> In other words, Don Mattingly, if, if this is not overturned, then maybe you lose a day of meal money. <laughs> All right, so the, the left heel hits it first. 
that heel will come up. The question is, did he stay in contact with the bag with the right foot? And yes, he did. So this is not going to get overturned. But you know what the moral of the story is? And you're going to start seeing it now from, from middle infielders taking the throw down from the steal. Stay on the tag. Lay, lay on the guy. Absolutely. Because if his foot comes off, and oftentimes it does with his momentum hitting the bag, if you're still there, you may have a chance to pick up a cheap out. It's like no meal money for, for today. Well, that changes everything in how this at bat takes on a whole different importance now for Brandon Bell. I mean, he has to have at least a productive out of this thing. For Nicasio, it's a simple change of events. With a runner at second, nobody out. This or one out, he has a, a base to play with here. And he doesn't have to make a quality pitch. Another meeting between Grandal and Nicasio. So they're going to walk him. You got to be careful. This may be a deke here. Yeah, perfect time to do it. That was a great call by you because for a second there it looked like that's what Grandal was doing. Tell you what, you don't see very many intentional walks on a 3 2 count. I, I, I mean, why not try and do the old trick of pitch where you show an intentional walk and just sit on the outside corner and try and blow one through him? Might catch a guy sleeping. Here's Maxwell. Well, has really been swinging it well. He's got a lot of confidence in that box right now. Just don't hit it at Kendrick. Nakashi has taken a lot of time. Maxwell asked for time. And now another meeting. Now that catch by how Kendrick, you were talking about it. it goes back to the eighth inning. Bases loaded. 2-0 count against Joel Peralta. And this is what Kendrick does to take away at least one, maybe two RBIs from Justin Maxwell and at that time, preserved the lead. What a play that was. So here's Nicasio to Maxwell. One ball and no strikes. Guy with long arms, you see a lot of pitchers pitch those guys in. He really doesn't have an open base. I mean, even, even nobody's even that nobody's on third with one out. You're not. You don't want to use it. He's got to get after him. Maxwell down the left field line, and this game is over. That's poetic justice. Well, you're right. He got denied in the eighth inning. He was not going to get denied here in the tenth. I think he's going to start playing a lot. Well, he should. He's red hot. And he's been red hot against lefties, and he's been red hot against righties. And this is not a hanger. This is a fastball with high velocity down and in. He was had some count leverage. He just spins on it and raked it right past you. Really had none chance. And the Giants sweep the Dodgers. Maxwell down the line. So the Giants who were looking for a spark got one. And the spark was the Dodgers coming into town. 
And this, my friends, was a really nice win for this Giants team. Uh, you talk about a happy flight heading off into a six game road trip. All right, let's check in with Amy G and a friend. All right, well, Dwayne said it best poetic justice for you right there. You had a hit stolen from you in the eighth. That was the possibility to get your team ahead, and you came back in the tenth, and it just looked like you weren't going to let that happen again. Go through your AB for us. Well, you know, Angel got on and uh, had that big steal there. And then, you, you know, it makes sense to intentionally walk belt to get to me, get, get the force and play. But, you know, I just kept my same approach. You know, I just tried to hit the ball hard every at bat. And, you know, hopefully good things will happen. So, just stuck with it. A couple things look really different, Justin, on this series versus the beginning of the homestand. You guys completely flipped the script on how you're playing. Yeah. How do you think you were able to do that? Oh, to be honest with you, I mean, our pitching has been doing a great job, and, you know, defense has been, you know, a strong suit for the team. But, uh, you know, I think that off day definitely helped let like, everybody clear their heads. And, you know, playing this series, guys get a lot of energy from playing here. You know, our fans are great. This is probably my favorite place to play in the whole world, and the fans have our back every night, so happy to get this sweep. Absolutely happy to get the sweep. That always means a happy flight, too, on a getaway day. One more thing for you. Something else that was missing at the beginning of this homestand was your guys' ability to come from behind, find that big hit. How does it feel to see your team be able to get that done? Well, it's great. I mean, our guys have been positive. You know, nobody's got negative. You know, guys have stuck with the same approach. Everyone's still getting all their work in. And, you know, it's just a matter of playing the game and just keeping a positive mindset and good things will happen, and guys have done that. All right, Justin Maxwell, congratulations. Dwayne and Mike, you get a happy flight. Well, we, we we love happy flights. Actually, what we really love even more are happy endings to a road trip or to a homestand. And this one did not start out very good, but this is how this homestand ended. Just a bullet right down the line in a 1-0 count, and everybody gets to go happy. To Denver, to home from the ballpark, it's just a happy time. But one of the keys in this whole series, I mean, you think about the series, they had lost eight games in a row. Number one, they, they, they stopped the, the losing streak. Number two, they beat Kershaw. And number three, today, they come from behind down 2 nothing in a ball game. And they really have the, their bullpen to thank. The bullpen in this series, and I want to get this right, nine and two-thirds innings, they gave up six hits, one earned run. They threw four shutout innings today. They were spectacular. And, uh, and Kaiba, I mean, this really is the team that we saw last year, the second half. Uh, they, good pitching, good defense, and timely hitting. Well, timely hitting, 8 for 24 in the series with runners in scoring position. Dodgers, 1 for 15. Big win for the Giants, final 3 2 San Francisco. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. Esurance Giants post game live with interviews on the wrap. That is all going to start right now. And go, Warriors.